What's going on everybody? My name is John Hammond and welcome back to another Pico CTF 2018 video. This challenge is called Artisanal Handcrafted HTTP 3. It has 300 points in the web exploitation category and has about 924 solves. So kind of in the middle, not in the same 2000 range, but not in the low 500 range between some of the challenges surrounding it. So interesting challenge, right? The prompt here says, we found a hidden flag server hiding behind a proxy, but the proxy has some interesting ideas of what qualifies someone to make HTTP requests. Looks like you'll have to do this one by hand. Try connecting to this netcat session and use the proxy to send HTTP requests to flag.local. We also recover a username and password for you to use on the login page, real business user, and whatever that is. So uh, let's go ahead and copy this, right? Let's just move into our terminal, see if we can get a simple connect.sh script going. Just paste in that one line to connect to it. Not entirely necessary, right? But good practice for what we're doing. And just crank that to chmod plus x, and then we can connect. It gives us a CAPTCHA each time. Um, you could probably write something to just determine what figlet or toilet font that this is, and then automate that CAPTCHA, but you don't entirely have to. Uh, we're going to be doing this as kind of stated by hand, so we'll just copy and paste whatever we're doing with our payloads, or at least our input, as we move forward. So simply 5 minus 5 is 0 in this case, and it says validation succeeded, commence HTTP. Okay, so uh, nope, real prompt here, just kind of on a blank line, we're, we're sitting pretty, but we do want to make some HTTP requests. The most common one we would expect is just get, right, all capital get, and then we need a location following it by space. So the forward slash is just the root location, um, and maybe you or I or whatever individual doesn't entirely know the kind of proper, perfect syntax for HTTP, that's fine, at least we can get an inkling when it responds to us. If I hit... Uh, enter here, it tells me HTTP forward slash 1.1. So it will want a version, and it will also want a missing host header. Okay, so let's try that again. Let's do the capture here, 5 plus 1 is 6, get forward slash, and then HTTP forward slash 1.1 for version, and then it wants a host header. So headers would follow the verb the app following the HTTP request, and it just wants the host here. We can say host colon, to specify the value for this, uh, flag.local, as was suggested in the challenge prompt. So two new lines here, and it gives us a response. It says, okay, 200 okay, success, powered by, I'm sorry, powered by express, probably the Node.js framework. It gives us some source code here, HTML. It says a real business internal flag server. We see a link to log in, and you have to log in before you can see today's flag. Okay, let's start to try and put this in some notes for us. We know we can get the root directory with this syntax, uh, just getting the root forward slash here, and then flag.local. Now let's do that exact same thing, except the location that we want is forward slash login. So, Let's copy this, connect again, 5 times 9, oh, quick maths, 45. <laughs> Enter here, and we get all of this output. That's not very visible, so I'll do that one more time. Okay, so now we have a login form. We see the post method here, and it's sending it to the login page. Two variables that we're working with, the username and the password. Thankfully, we were already given that in the challenge prompt, so we can go ahead and make this post request as well. Now, this has a little more syntax to it than we're probably already used to. Get is very, very simple, right? But post can have a little bit more headers that come with it. When I was first solving this challenge, I figured, okay, let's actually look up the syntax for a post request in HTTP. So I saw this MDN, right? This page from Mozilla developers here, uh, and they actually had a lot of the real formal ho like headers that I need between the content type, the content length, etc. You can scroll down and see an example of the syntax. So you supply your variables at the very bottom, and you've probably seen that before in Burp Suite or whatever other pen testing stuff, or maybe you've done this before with web requests, um, but we do need the content type and content length. So if we were to write this out, we would actually end up submitting a post request to login, right, with our variables user equals, at least according to that output, the name of that variable is user and the name of the pass is pass. So we can take what we're given here with real business user and the pass, whatever this is, ampersand pass equals that, and we will get the content type according to Mozilla Firefox, should be application forward slash x www form URL encoded. So application x www form URL encoded. And then the content length, we can 
highlight in Sublime Text to see what this is, 38 characters. So let's say 38 here. Great. Now let's go ahead and copy this, bring it to our shell. Six times nine. Uh, so, oh boy, 63? No, that's seven. 54. Goodness gracious. All right. Found, return, set cookie, real business token is equal to this, and then a path is set for us. So it looks like we did successfully log in. It would redirect us to the forward slash. So now we have a cookie that we can actually use to authenticate. Let's go ahead and add that as a header, right? Cookie equals all this. And then let's do the get forward slash host flag local, etc. Now we can reconnect. 3 times 6, 18. Submit. And there we go. Hello, real business employee. Today's flag is Pico CTF only use non-GMO transfer protocols. That's funny. Cool. So if we wanted to, we could make a get flag script with this. Um, perhaps save this in a file and redirect it to it or do some cat here doc, whatever. Let's try that. Get some, get some flexing with a here doc. Let's do bin bash, right? And we want to put this in CTF, YouTube, Pico, additional or artisanal, get flag.sh, cat, something until EOF, right? I'm trying to figure out the syntax. Yeah, EOF, right? That should echo all those new lines. So now if I mark that as executable with get flag, we can run that. Oh, what is that? Peculiar. Let's go to Google. Google will rescue us. Google cat here doc. I typed Google into Google. Forward slash forward slash EOF and then there we go. Now let's pipe that into our netcat connection or in our case connect.sh which should be fine to use. Run get flag. Oh, we need to do the validation. Never mind. Guess we can't go ahead and paste that in. Uh, maybe if we wanted to put those together, you could use probably Pwn Tools and Python to manually do the validation and then send that information and then carve out the flag. Uh, or just simply, you know, deal with the fact that we have received the flag once, we can save it, submit it, and that is good enough for us in this case. So let's mark that as complete. Save this flag. And we can go ahead and submit it for 300 points. Paste. And we're moving. Must be logged in. Lost connection. Cool. Whatever, we're just going to roll with it. That's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, interesting thing with using netcat for HTTP requests. Kind of just copy and pasting the payloads that we've been building out and exploring due throughout our manual testing. So before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you so much. Can't say it enough. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. It's just a little feel-good feeling, some warm fuzzies in your heart, helping out a dude put some food on the table. $5 a month or more will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. So if I record a couple of videos and put them in a shared Google Drive folder, YouTube, I'll normally have it schedule or gradually release videos. If you want the content right when it's ready, right when it's hot, that's the best way to do it. It's just $5 a month, and I am grateful for your support. Please do join our, join our Discord server, link in the description. It is a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. A lot of smart people there, certainly smarter than me, and just a really cool place to hang out with the community. So please do like, comment, and subscribe. Hope to see you in a later video, and take care.